Are you ready to see the longest cave in the world? Let's do this. Corey ha actually hasn't even pulled this yet, so we're gonna see what happens. Okay, you guys are about to come in. We're not supposed to come in? Yeah. I'm going. Feels amazing. Oh Feels like standing in front of the refrigerator. Yeah, hold your arms out. I'm the gang in the world. What's up, fellow journeyers? Coming to you live. Not really live. I think I just always want to say that. <laughs> Coming to you from Park City, Kentucky. Uh, just maybe 15 minutes down the road from the Mammoth Cave entrance. Oh. And if you're curious, I didn't think it would do it, but Corey's sewer hoses actually held up for two nights in a row. We're here for four nights, so I'm uh, kind of curious if it's going to make it the last two nights. But so far, so good for him and me, I guess, since it, since it flows downhill toward our rig. But one of my absolute favorite things about RVing is the places you can go. Now, you can visit Mammoth Cave by probably, there's probably some hotel rooms, or you could just do a long day trip, or you could, you know, pass through or whatever, but it's pretty cool that you can stay. I mean, this is a very RV friendly area. Now you've got different options as far as RV. Now you've got the private park option, which again, we're just 15 minutes from the cave entrance here, like what we've got now. If you've got a big rig or you don't want to take a chances that, you know, I think the two parks that are actually the national park campgrounds, there's three, I think two can have RVs. But out of those two parks, uh, I think one may be a max of 38 feet, the other one a max of 40. So if you're a big rig, 40, 42 feet, you can maybe do it, but you know, maybe a little more stress as far as getting around but we already had thousand trails this year uh, we just added 60 bucks on to be in this park which is a thousand trails park so you know pretty easy to get the money back on that now, as far as what to pack for the cave um, they say to bring water um, now this is a little bit of a different experience because it is like the heat index it's like 96 degrees um, the feels like temperature I think maybe 92 actually so it's it's pretty hot <laughs> outside but we got to remember that when we go in this cave it's like 55 degrees give or take a couple degrees year round so hey are you ready to go to a cave yeah. can you yeah. say cave yeah is that what that means you're looking like a mad scientist with that hair buddy I duck. yeah yeah we're packing it we're getting it ready mm -hmm. taking my hiking shoes hensley's eating so she's got energy right girl mm -hmm. everybody ready you ready babe i'm getting there all right that's how it goes i just walk around filming and <laughs> what are you what are you doing you love this camera don't you yeah, yeah. yeah. it's kind of how it goes, isn't it, bud? Run around like a, like banshees trying to get out of here. You do have to schedule tours. Um, you don't have to. It is a good idea to schedule your tour, especially if you come during the COVID stuff, because I don't think they're letting as many people in as usual. And like, you just do a walk up. It says pretty decent chance it's sold out. And based on what we saw in the numbers when we scheduled it, I'd, I'd say it's true. So we have scheduled the tour, right, buddy? Day bag. You ready to do this? Corey ha actually hasn't even pulled this yet, so we're gonna see what happens. Perfect. Yeah, I bet. Like backing up. Oh my gosh. See that? Perfect. There's nothing coming out. Nice and gentle. Did you even open it all the way or did you just do it slow? You cheated. No, I opened it all the way. You opened it all the way? Yeah. This is a proper RV right here. That's barely even coming out. That doesn't count. Yeah, we only took one shower. <laughs> That's one shower? <laughs> yes! Uh, <laughs> he knows what he's doing. He knows it's not a good idea. <laughs> Thought you might hog the shade, but you shared. <laughs> so a few things I noticed while editing the video that we didn't mention in the video. Uh, number one, uh, at the time of when this was filmed, face masks were not required in Mammoth Cave. They weren't required in Kentucky. That has now changed. We do have and do wear our face masks in the video, uh, but that has changed between now and then. Uh, number two, one good thing to know when you're traveling, uh, a lot of the times, from what I've read on most of the states, when they say face masks are required, 
they're not necessarily required in outdoor spaces where it's easy to distance six feet or more. So you have situations like in Mammoth Cave National Park. I don't know specifically their policy. In general, a lot of your trails and outside activities, if it's easy to distance six feet or more, you don't necessarily have to be wearing a face mask. And then thirdly, you'll see that we're with finding our someday a lot in the video within six feet. We've been We've been together for weeks, pretty much like family. So, I mean, if you see us with them, that's who that is. That's the reason for that. that big picture, like we do take this seriously um, and we are doing the best we can. We're learning. Like a lot of you guys, we pretty much self quarantined for months. Uh, Hensley, bless her heart, like she's still learning how to wear the mask. She had no reason we had, you know, groceries delivered, Amazon delivered. I mean, this is new. This is new for us. I know this is new for a lot of you. We're figuring out what's it, when can we wear the mask? When should we not? When should we? What's it like to film with the mask on? Can you even hear me with a mask on? And mom, you know, lots of things we're still figuring out. Just, just take it easy on us. We're, we're doing the best that we can. Back to the video. We're not supposed to come in? Yeah, only one for me. Okay, all right, going out. I'm going, oh, come on, we gotta go out. The cowboys are the early in the morning. More? You ready to get in the cave? I'm so ready. Like, when it's, what, 92 degrees, a cave sounds so good right now. This tour? that we are offering is a two mile tour in length, has 130 stairs. There are no restrooms available inside the cave. If you have heart problems, breathing problems, trouble walking long distances, uh, climbing stairs or any other health concerns, I want you to consider your limitations before you get into the cave. As evacuation from the cave for medical purposes can and will take several hours. All right, safety talk is over, basically, I'm sure a lot of this is very different than a year ago today. You can still do the tours during COVID. Keep six feet apart, they recommend masks. Um, everything is self-guided. They usually do have guided tours with the rangers, but everything's self-guided. So we're gonna see, um, hopefully we don't get lost, is the goal today. Us, the big thing is trying to make sure everybody's used the bathroom because you can't do that down there. You guys excited? Yeah. 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 You love trees. You always have loved trees. Are they pretty? Are they so pretty? Getting it? <laughs> I think so. That might be a cool shot. All that oh cool my air coming God. up. That feels oh amazing. Do you feel that, kid? Oh, that is amazing. It feels like standing in front of the refrigerator. Thank you. Like Every cave has a twilight zone, the transition area between the cave's utter darkness and the light of day. So we've entered into the twilight zone of Mammoth Cave. Oh, this is a huge room. Wow. Do you know this is the fourth biggest room in the cave, Hensley? It? It's not even the biggest room. There's three other rooms bigger than this. Isn't that crazy? All this stuff is just remnants of all the mining stuff that they have going on. So they're doing a fantastic job as far as distancing here. Like we're really not around much of anybody other than our group. Like they're sending people separate ways. They've got the whole safety talk. What do you think, buddy? This thing's huge. <laughs> now Mammoth Cave is the longest cave in the world, but it's not the biggest cave in the world. I think the biggest is like somewhere in Vietnam that was, it wasn't even discovered until like 1991, like a small cave in or something like that, which it's supposed to be just like, like massive beyond belief big. This one's been explored a lot. I think it's like 400 plus miles of underground tunnels and passages. Like it's insanely long.
That had to been a, a pretty good sized operation that they had. Oh yeah, it was huge. Was it was very effective. Yeah, no, five of them died down I was inside say, the probably cave. Probably everybody died. And the rest of them eventually died of tuberculosis in the end. Wow. The doctor himself died of tuberculosis seven years later. Oh, oh that's... man. Yeah. Well, that's why we all know what we know now because they, exactly. they experimented right? for us. <laughs> yeah, they did all the work, so now we don't have to do it today. All right. Wow. But this one and the one back there are the only two that are left, but there would have been other huts in other parts of the cave. Those really? huts were because they, they thought at the time that mountain air um, cured tuberculosis, so they assumed that maybe this would be similar to mountain air. So that's why they had the huts down here. Oh. And the doctor that started it owned the cave. Oh, it lasted wow. six months basically because everybody died. Uh, Usually, like when we've been down in Florida, we'll see like summer homes of people that had TB and were going exactly. to recover. They, had the right idea. But they, yeah. <laughs> they needed to experiment. I mean, that's how we know True. what we know now because everybody tried stuff. All right, you see the end of these logs? See how they're hollowed out? So they use these as pipes. Was the water for the tuberculosis houses or is it for something else? This is for the mining. Oh, for the mining. When they get oh. to get to make the gunpowder. It's their money for saltpeter to make gunpowder. Yes, because for Before the war of 1812, um, we couldn't obviously get our gunpowder from Britain like we used to. Oh, they didn't want to give us the gunpowder for that? <laughs> here, shoot us. What do, you, what do you hear? Let's go see what's over here, come on. This space used to open up to the outside and it collapsed. Does it say when it collapsed? It doesn't give a date. Doesn't give a date? Mm -mm. But it used to look like that. It used to be able to look down over the valley, they said. But they said they won't reopen it again because the cave has gotten used to it. So it would change the way the, the wind blows through the cave. The air flows, yeah. Mm -hmm. So this section wasn't toured very often in the eight, late 1800s. And so a mushroom company decided to b build mushroom beds and grow mushrooms out here because it was ideal conditions. And someone sabotaged it by dumping coal oil all over the mushroom beds and ruined all of their, you know, so the company never actually saw their first deal. Exactly. Look at like look at the ceiling. It's like it's like an alien landing or something. It is pretty neat. It's pretty crazy. But this is I guarantee you this is where the Indians stayed in the 1700s. That's where you would stay. Heck yeah! Can you imagine coming up across this in the summer and it's like all of a sudden 50 degrees instead of 100? Oh yeah, I know. Wow. We could feel the breeze coming out of here. It's crazy. You can also hear my uh, my child up there. So. <laughs> We're coming. What do you think of the cave, JJ? Mm. He's waving bye-bye. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> you ready to go bye-bye? What, uh, what do you think of the cave, Hensley? Great. What's been your favorite part? Sitting on the bench. Sitting on the bench? Okay. <laughs> 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 we could have done that for free. Is this the light at the end of the tunnel? That's right. Are you sure we're, you want to just leave? left the twilight zone. And the, the wind and starts the wind. again. Yeah. <sighs> we made it. Oh, wow. Yeah, you can like her hair. Lean forward and say, I'm king of the world. Yeah, hold your arms out. I'm the king of the world. Yeah. <laughs> it's already in there. That's cool. If you don't want to carry what you got on your shoes in that cave to another cave so it doesn't hurt the back. You've seen that before if you go into multiple caves. Their nostrils and mouth openings, and it actually interferes with their breathing during hibernation. Oh. During hibernation. Which means they wake up more often, they get comfortable, which means they burn through their, their bodily resources fast, which means many more of them will die during hibernation and never wake up in the spring. It's hard to believe this whole, like you can imagine just walking out in these woods and just finding Mammoth Cave through this hole, which is where they found it, I think, so that is crazy. So in addition to the cave, which is the main attraction, you've also got all kinds of trails, like some of them like, you know, springing off of where the cave's at. This is a big, you remember how many thousand miles this thing is? The whole park, 4,000 acres or something, or it's a big area. You're doing good, buddy. <laughs> Watch this. Ready, JJ? Jump. <laughs> he thinks that's the funniest thing. <laughs> Apparently it's 53,000 acres. <laughs> Just a little bit off. Way off. <laughs> <laughs> it's a no look. Cut to the driver's side even more, baby. We got tons of them over here. 
slow, or you're gonna go off that ledge like really far on the other side. You're good. You just, it's gonna be a slow drop. Just go slow. Good. Second down. There we go. Finding our someday has moved on, but we should be able to catch up with each other. We're both kind of going kind of the same direction, north Michigan, Indiana, Wisconsin-ish. We both got the Nomad Near Me app as well, so we're kind of watching where each person goes and get alerts when we pass each other and all that, which I've not done this yet, but when we released this app two weeks ago, like you guys stepped up big time. Like uh, within like three days, over 1,600 people in the app, just tons and tons of interaction totally awesome it's just incredible and then just thank you thank you so much guys uh, for stepping up for this we do really hope that our nomad near me app is a game changer for the rv community as far as helping rvers meet other rvers in person and as far as mammoth cave if you came to this video specifically for mammoth cave and you have no clue who we even are possibly <laughs> but uh it looks really neat like it looked like an awesome cave it was huge it was wide open they get an insane amount of visitors every year but this year honestly and based on people we talked to who had done the tours before at the cave when the restrictions weren't going on or even like what we read on the website on what we could possibly see just didn't feel like you could get the full effect and the full experience of a cave because they only had the self-guided tour they also really closely regulated where you could go in the cave so I don't know what percentage they opened for the self-guided tour but it looked like it was not a huge percentage of what you could possibly see with like an you know, all the different cave tours they could offer. Everybody had the exact same area they explored in this self-guided tour. And all the rangers who would usually be giving the tours were just kind of spread out on the tour. So you could ask rangers questions and they would give you background and history, but I don't know that just walking up to a ranger and asking them questions about something versus like being on a tour with the rangers talking the whole time, I felt like we didn't really find out as much about the cave. And because this is a new thing I know for the National Park too, like things just weren't labeled all that well maybe for the different things we were probably gonna see with the Rangers. And so maybe some of it was there and we just didn't know it was there from the tour. And I think too the prices, it was 18 bucks a person for adults. I think that's in the ballpark, if not exactly what it would have been for an entire full-fledged tour. So the price didn't change, even though we felt like maybe we weren't getting the full experience. It just didn't overall feel like an $18 a person type experience. It felt like maybe like a $10, maybe $12 experience, something like that. And so if you're in the area and you haven't done Mammoth Cave before, especially if you haven't done a cave before, uh, it, it still might be worth it for you. I'll, I'll get I'll get Marissa's opinion. All right, Marissa's gonna share with us her vast knowledge. You're not gonna get to do the Marissa shuffle here. Like, I wanna know. For real, how did you feel about Mammoth Cave? What was your favorite thing about Mammoth Cave? <laughs> I like that it was cool down there. I'm okay, like... it was cool. You're talking like 40 degree drop, probably, right? It like, felt It felt like, it feels like amazing. 100 outside and we got inside the cave and it was like 55 or whatever. It's just been so hot and humid that it was just worth it just to mm -hmm. get a few hours of being in the cool it was it was pretty glorious in that aspect what was your um your least favorite thing i feel like travel's just gonna be different you know everybody's trying to do they trying to do the best they can but there's just a new norm with travel unfortunately and you know they're doing the best they can trying to keep everything spread out and so Things are having to change the way that we we take tours and we explore places. Uh -huh. um, so I think a lot of it was closed off, which is unfortunate. But those areas that get tight and confined, you know, they have those closed down. Yeah, this may, could be the new norm for a while. Um, and we'll share with you guys. We've been to a lot of different places and seen maybe what it was like without this before. And we're starting to see what it's like after. And it's still fun, but it's different. And you may just want to... Like Mammoth, I think we'll put a little bookmark in it and maybe be back and yeah. do it again with a different tour um, at some point. But still fun. I mean, it beats sitting still and going stir crazy. So if you're Absolutely. questioning, do we get out and we do these things because it's going on so far, I would say a definitive yes. Get out. The feel at the RV parks is that people are still out and meeting people at a safe distance and doing things. And so, I mean, like, just get out and do what you can. It beats not doing anything in my mind. We love national parks. We love Mammoth Cave. We'll probably be back. Um, if you want to see more about national parks, um, we've got a playlist that we'll link to on YouTube. Just we've been to a we've been to a lot of national That's parks. We haven't added them up lately, but we've been to a lot of national yes, parks. We love them. <laughs> Bang for the buck, man! They're awesome. Check those out. That's our journey as far as Mammoth Cave. Until next time, we'll catch you guys later.